Welcome to H-ology. I am Nuke-like. Welcome to our video on understanding glycolysis, the energy pathway of life. Glycolysis takes place in the cytoplasm, the fluid-filled region of the cell outside the nucleus. Glycolysis can occur with or without oxygen. In the presence of oxygen, glycolysis is the first stage of cellular respiration. In the absence of oxygen, glycolysis allows cells to make small amounts of ATP through a process of fermentation. There are 10 enzymes involved in breaking down sugar. The 10 steps of glycolysis are organized by the order in which specific enzymes act upon the system. Glycolysis consists of two main phases, the energy requiring phase and the energy releasing phase. First half of glycolysis is energy requiring phase. Second half is energy releasing phase. Now let's explore the energy requiring phase of glycolysis. In this phase, the starting molecule of glucose gets rearranged, and two phosphate groups are attached to it. ATP is used up in first and third steps. Both of these chemical reactions is catalyzed by kinase enzyme. It is irreversible process. Let's start with the energy releasing phase. In this phase, each three carbon sugar is converted into another three carbon molecule, pyruvate, through a series of reactions. In these reactions, two ATP molecules and one NADH molecule are made because this phase takes place twice. Once for each of the two three carbon sugars, it makes four ATP and two NADH overall. Let's now take a closer look at the steps of glycolysis. Glycolysis can be summarized into 10 steps, each facilitated by specific enzymes. Step one. Glucose is phosphorylated by the enzyme hexokinase to form glucose 6 phosphate. Step 2. The enzyme phosphoglucose isomerase converts glucose 6 phosphate into fructose 6 phosphate. Step 3. Fructose 6 phosphate is phosphorylated by the enzyme phosphofructokinase, generating fructose 1 6 bisphosphate. Step 4. The enzyme aldolase splits fructose 1,6-bisphosphate into two 3-carbon molecules, dihydroxyacetone phosphate and glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate. Step 5. Dihydroxyacetone phosphate is converted into glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate with the help of the enzyme triose phosphate isomerase. Step 6. Glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate is oxidized by the enzyme glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate dehydrogenase, producing NADH and 1,3-bisphosphoglycerate. Step 7. 1,3-bisphosphoglycerate donates its phosphate group to ADP, forming ATP. This reaction is catalyzed by the enzyme phosphoglycerate kinase. Step 8. The enzyme phosphoglycerate mutase converts 3-phosphoglycerate into 2-phosphoglycerate. Step 9. The enzyme enolase removes water from 2-phosphoglycerate, resulting in the formation of phosphenol pyruvate. Step 10. Lastly, the enzyme pyruvate kinase transfers a phosphate group from phosphenol pyruvate to ADP, generating ATP and pyruvate. The most important enzyme for regulation of glycolysis is phosphofructokinase, which catalyzes formation of the fructose 1,6-bisphosphate. The activity of phosphofructokinase is increased whenever the cell's ATP supply is reduced or when ATP breakdown products such as ADP and AMP are in excess. Phosphofructokinase speeds up or slows down glycolysis in response to the energy needs of the cell. The end products of glycolysis are two molecules of pyruvate, two molecules of ATP, and two molecules of NADA. Although four ATP molecules are produced in the second half, the net gain of glycolysis is only two ATP because two ATP molecules are used in the first half of glycolysis. What happens to pyruvate and NADH at the end of glycolysis? We're left with two ATP, two NADH, and two pyruvate molecules. What happens to the NADH? It can't just sit around in the cell piling up. During aerobic glycolysis, this NADH is transported by the malate aspartate shuttle or glycerol phosphate shuttle to the mitochondria, where it is reoxidized to NAD while it participates in the electron transport chain to produce ATP. Thus, it maintained the redox states NADH and a D plus in cytosol and mitochondria. So, 
All cells need a way to turn NADH back into NAD to keep glycolysis going. When oxygen is absent, cells may use other, simpler pathways to regenerate NAD. In these pathways, NADH donates its electrons to an acceptor molecule in a reaction that doesn't make ATP, but does regenerate NAD so glycolysis can continue. This process is called fermentation. In eukaryotic cells, the pyruvate molecules produced at the end of glycolysis are transported into mitochondria, which are the sites of cellular respiration. There, pyruvate will be transformed into an acetyl group that will be picked up and activated by a carrier compound called coenzyme of CoO. Mnemonics to remember glycolysis pathway is Granny gave fruit-flavored gummy bears, D-Boys perfectly packed it in pink packets. G for glucose, G for glucose 6-phosphate. F fructose 6 phosphate, F for fructose 1 6 bisphosphate, G for glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate, D for dihydroxyacetone phosphate, E bisphosphoglycerate, P 3 phosphoglycerate, P 2 phosphoglycerate, formation of phosphenol pyruvate. Lastly, P stands for final product of glycolysis that is pyruvate. Points to remember. Glycolysis is the process of breaking down glucose. Glycolysis can take place with or without oxygen. Glycolysis produces two molecules of pyruvate, two molecules of ATP, two molecules of NADH, and two molecules of water. Glycolysis takes place in the cytoplasm. There are an enzymes involved in breaking down sugar. The 10 steps of glycolysis are organized by the order in which specific enzymes act upon the system. And that concludes our journey through glycolysis, the essential energy pathway of life. We hope you enjoyed this video and gained a deeper understanding of this complex process. Remember to like, subscribe, and stay tuned for more educational content. Thank you for watching.